Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be covering an open source model for text generation called GPT-2. Particularly, we will be looking at the smallest version of GPT-2. You might already be familiar with ChatGPT, which is based on more advanced models like GPT-3 or GPT-4. GPT-2 is an earlier version of these models and while not as powerful, it is still a robust tool for generating text. One key advantage of GPT-2 is that it can be used without incurring any cost, making it highly accessible. So let's check out this powerful open source model. But first, let's start by understanding the problem and the functionality we are addressing with GPT-2. In today's digital world, creating content quickly and efficiently is crucial. Whether it's drafting articles, writing creative stories, or generating code snippets, the demand for automated text generation is higher than ever. GPT-2 developed by OpenAI addresses this need by generating human-like text based on a given prompt. GPT-2 is a transformer model pre-trained on a vast corpus of English data. It was trained to predict the next word in a sentence, learning to generate coherent and contextually relevant text. This ability makes GPT-2 incredibly versatile for various applications from content creation to automated response. The primary objective for GPT-2 was to guess the next word in a sentence. The inputs are sequence of continuous text of a certain length and the targets are the same sequence shifted one token to the right. The model uses a mask mechanism to ensure that the prediction for each token only uses information from the previous tokens and not future ones. GPT-2 has 124 million parameters, making it the smallest version of GPT-2 models released by OpenAI. Despite its size, it has demonstrated impressive performance on various text generation tasks. Now, let us talk about the benefits and relevance of GPT-2 in businesses and real life. The first use case is encountered in content creation. GPT-2 can assist writers by generating drafts, brainstorming ideas, or even completing entire articles. This can save significant time and effort in the content creation process. The second use case is in customer support. Businesses can use GPT-2 to automate customer support responses providing quick and accurate replies to common queries, thus improving customer satisfaction and reducing response times. It also finds use in education. In the education sector, GPT-2 can be used to create educational content, generate quiz questions, or provide personalized tutoring by generating relevant explanations based on students' queries. It also finds use in coding assistance, where developers can generate code snippets, suggest improvements, or even help in debugging by analyzing and predicting code sequences. Last but not the least, the use case that we'll be covering in this video is financial analysis. GPT-2 can be fine-tuned for financial sentiment analysis, helping analysis process and interpret vast amounts of financial text data quickly and accurately. These applications showcase how GPT-2 can enhance productivity and efficiency across various fields. Also, I would like to mention that this list of use cases is not exhaustive. Let us now check out this open source model on the Hugging Face website before moving on towards the demo. So this is the page on the Hugging Face website where we find all the relevant information about this open source model. Here on the model card, we can see that at first a brief introduction to the GPT model has been given and here it has been mentioned that this model is pre-trained on English language using a causal language modeling objective and the link to the paper where it was discussed has also been provided. You can go to this page and check it out if you want to develop a deeper understanding of this model. 
and also we find the link to the page where it was first released this is a link to the open ai website and here you can just check out everything about the gpt2 model and then we have the description of the model which we have already covered earlier in the video but uh, let's just touch upon it once again so here it says that gpt2 is a transformer model pre-trained on a very large corpus of English data in a self-supervised fashion. This means that the model was pre-trained on the raw text only with no human intervention. Apart from that, here it has been mentioned that the predictions are based on the previous tokens and not the future tokens. And then here it has been emphasized that this particular model was specifically trained for generating text and guessing the next word in a sentence. And then we have the information about this version where it says that this is the smallest version of GPT-2 so far with 124 million parameters. Next we have the intended use and limitations which has already been emphasized in the model description section but again it has been reiterated in here where they say that this raw model is used for text generation and we can fine tune it to downstream a task which is on the same line as that of the text generation after that we have the how to use section where it shows how we can use this model from the pipeline function which is present in the transformers library you can check this out. This would help you to implement this model in your own code. And then we have some information about the limitations and biases. So here it has been mentioned that the model is having a bias because of the nature of the data on which it was trained. In the model description section, it was mentioned that this model was trained on raw text without any human intervention. And because of this, the data contained quite a lot of unfiltered content from the internet because of which the training data was far from neutral and because the nature of the data was biased therefore the nature of the model is also biased that is it has inherited the bias from the training data on which it was trained then moving further down we have some information about the training data in a little bit more detail here it has been told that the OpenAI team wanted to train the model on a very large data and to build it they scraped all the web pages from outbound links on reddit and they had to remove all the wikipedia pages from the data set and the resulting data set was called web text and web text is the data set on which this model was trained. Moving further below we have some information about the training procedure where pre-processing and evaluation results have been discussed. You can check out all these technical details on this page. Then here we have the option to train, deploy and use this model. And here we see the number of times this particular model was downloaded in the last month and you can see that the number is quite huge. So it reflects that quite a lot of people are using this model. And in the inference API section here, we can check out how this model works you will need to be logged in for this to work and on clicking compute we can see that it will generate the text see and then here we have some information about the spaces on hugging face website which are currently using this model so this is all it if you are interested in knowing more about this model, you can check out this page yourself and go to all these links which have been mentioned in here. So let's move on to a demo created by my colleague to see GPT-2 in action. We will use a simple text prompt and watch how GPT-2 generates coherent and contextually relevant text. This is the interface that we will be using to showcase the functionality of the GPT-2 model. Here we can see that we have an input placeholder where the prompt would be passed and then we have a button and when we we'll click on this button in the back end the model would start generating the text for this particular prompt and once the text has been generated it would be displayed in here. Now you can see that we have already worked up an example where the prompt is what is machine learning 
the prompt is also displayed in here in this section and you can clearly see the quality of the generated text now we will be using another prompt and we'll change this prompt from what is machine learning to what is python and then we click on the generate button and wait for the model to generate the response now for text generation there is a parameter to set the length of the tokens which are to be generated and we have set the maximum length to 300 words for text generation in this particular app so in order to generate those 300 words of response it would approximately take 3 minutes and let's say if we set the maximum length to 20 or 30 words it gives the output in approximately 15 seconds so the time taken depends on the length of the answer this is the catch with this particular model and in the scenarios where you have a few minutes to spare or your use case doesn't require such a lengthy text to be generated this model can be perfectly used you can integrate it into your existing applications or you can use it in your code and play around with it now let's go to the timestamp where the output is generated so we can see how much time it takes to generate 300 tokens See, it approximately took 3 minutes to generate 300 tokens. And this is the output. The quality of the output can also be seen. So, it is worth the wait actually. So, if you want a lighter version of GPT for which you doesn't need to pay, then this is the model that you should go for. But, we already know that GPT-2 has fewer parameters which means it might not generate text that's as coherent or contextually accurate as GPT-4. Please pay attention here that here we are comparing GPT-2 with GPT-4 and additionally GPT-4 can handle more complex and nuanced tasks while GPT-2 may struggle with those. But if we talk only in terms of text generation where not a lot of complexity is involved and you just want to automate some stuff for free then this is where this open source model can find you. So, let us discuss some of the major limitations that we need to be aware of. So, the first limitation is data quality and this we have already covered earlier. This stems from the fact that the data on which this model was trained contained quite a lot of unfiltered content from the internet which made the data far from neutral and because of this the model inherited the bias of the data in it so because of this the quality of the data suffers then the next limitation is the context length and gpt2 may struggle with generating very long or high com or highly complex text compared to more advanced models like gpt3 or gpt4 and that we've already seen in the demo section where we were generating a text of 300 words length and for that it took 3 minutes but let's say if we reduce the number of tokens or the words that needs to be generated then the model easily generates it within a few seconds. And the next limitation is specialized tasks. While GPT-2 can be fine tuned for specific tasks, it may not perform as well as models specifically designed and trained for those tasks. Because primarily this particular model was generated for text generation and guessing the next word in the sentence. So these are some of the limitations that we need to be aware of before making the decision to utilize this particular model in our existing applications and codes. So in conclusion, GPT-2 is a powerful open source model for text generation, offering numerous benefits for businesses and individuals alike. Though there are some limitations, but we have seen in the demo the quality of the content that is generated by this particular model. So this is not going to be a very big of a concern until and unless it is being utilized in some complex task. Whether you are looking to automate content creation, improve customer support or delve into financial analysis, GPT-2 provides a versatile solution. So if you are interested in implementing GPT-2, 
for your projects or need assistance with the similar AI solutions, you can reach out to us via our email ID which is contact at the rate codazarts.com or you can visit us on our website which is www.codazarts.com. You can find our LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook handles in the description box down below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more such insights into the world of AI and machine learning. See you next time with another such open source model.